everyone, and thank you for joining the Needy Med Special Topic Webinar, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, the Building Blocks of More Tomorrows. My name is Carla. I am the Education Coordinator here at Needy Meds. And before we get started, I want to go over just a few tips. You can feel free to type any questions you may have throughout the presentation into the question section of your GoToWebinar control panel, but know that we will reserve answering questions until the end. If we don't have the time to answer all of your questions, please know we will follow up with you personally via email or phone call after the webinar. Um, and that may be um, by the end of this week or the latest, the beginning of next week. But of course, in the meantime, if you do have a question for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation or Needy Meds, we'll provide you with contact information to our organizations again at the end of the webinar. Also know that this webinar is being recorded and will be available for viewing on our YouTube page as soon as we convert it into a video, which again should probably be by the beginning of next week. For those of you that were unable to download both of the PowerPoint presentations that accompany today's presentation, please know you will receive it as well via email in a follow-up from me after the webinar ends. So with that, let's get started. For those of you that are not familiar with Needy Meds, we are a national nonprofit, and our mission statement, as you can see on this slide right on your screen, is that we are dedicated to both educating and empowering those seeking affordable health care. And we really define the education portion of our mission in two ways. First of all, certainly by letting people know about Needy Meds and the ways they can save on health care expenses. But also, we define education by bringing to our users' attention experts in the field of specific diagnoses, which is why we are so pleased to have representative from the, representatives from the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation with us today. The mission of the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation is to cure cystic fibrosis and to provide all people with the, with the disease the opportunity to lead full, productive lives by funding research and drug development, by promoting individualized treatment, and by ensuring access to high quality specialized care. Today, you will learn about cystic fibrosis, the history of the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, advancements in care and treatment, and also what services are currently available for those with cystic fibrosis and their families, which is a pretty big deal. The experts walking us through this information are Paula Lomas and Ozzy Cater. Paula has 26 years of experience working with children and adults with CF and their families in the role of nurse coordinator. She has also been a research coordinator for various CF clinical trials. Paula is a credentialed quality improvement coach and is quite passionate about improving care delivery. Paula has been the Director of Clinical Communication since 2015 and is responsible for educational resources to support standard of care and guidelines implementation. Ozzy joined the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation in 2013 and is Senior Manager of Policy and Advocacy. Ozzy is a graduate of Loyola University, Maryland with a degree in biology and holds a Pharmacy Technician Board Certificate. Her diverse background in the pharmaceutical industry, healthcare management, and health policy, and her passion for helping others has made her instrumental in building the foundation's access programs and connecting people with CF and their families with resources to manage their care. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and pass the mic and the screen to Paula, who's gonna kick off today's presentation. So if everybody wouldn't buy mind bearing with us while we do that transfer. It may take just a moment and you will hear some silence. And Paula, with that, you should be able to go ahead and grab the screen and take it away. Thanks, everybody, and enjoy today's presentation. Thanks, Carla. Are you able to see my screen? Because I don't see it up yet. Let's see. I am able to see your screen, but it looks like I'm looking at a snapshot of, there you go, just go ahead and pull up the PowerPoint, and you are good to go, Paula. Thank you for right. checking. Thank you. Well, thank you for inviting us, and also thank you to everyone for your interest in learning more about the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Um, 
and how the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation is um, a part of the building blocks for building more tomorrows for those individuals with CF. I thought it would be best to start off with making sure you knew what cystic fibrosis was. Some people know and some people don't know. So let's talk about that. Cystic fibrosis is an inherited, life-shortening chronic disease and that it affects more than 30,000 children and adults in the United States and probably about 70,000 individuals worldwide. Though the diagnosis is now made primarily through newborn screening, there are still some people diagnosed later in um, childhood as well as into adulthood. And that is because newborn screening has only been required for about the past 10 years in the United States. And some cases, um, for those who were not diagnosed through newborn screening, the C, um, they may be misdiagnosed as having asthma or a bronchiectasis. People with CF have to have two copies of a defective gene, one from their mother, one from their father, and this will result in a defective protein called cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator. Now that is a mouthful, so I am going to continue to refer to it as CFTR. This defect causes the production of unusually thick, sticky mucus, and that will clog the lungs which leads to life-threatening lung infections, and it also will obstruct the pancreas and stop natural enzymes from helping the body break down and absorb food. CF can present in very different ways from one person to the next, and even among, differently among those of the same age, the same gender, and the same race. The presence and severity of symptoms occur across a wide range, and that would likely be due to the thousands of different mutations of that CF gene, as well as other modifying genes. And although CF is known primarily as a progressive lung disease, the GI tract, endocrine system, sinuses, muscles, and joints are also often involved. However, various body systems are not necessarily affected in each person with CF or at each stage of an individual's life. And this screen is meant to show you how varied those effects could be. The impact of CF tends to increase with age, thus increasing the complexity of self-care. For example, as someone ages, uh, many people with CF eventually develop CF-related diabetes and begin to experience enough trouble with breathing that they require lung transplantation to extend their life. So that is really a very brief overview of what cystic fibrosis is and how it affects the body. Now I'd like to talk more about the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Back in 1955, faced with insurmountable odds, but determined to save the lives of their children, a group of concerned parents came together to form the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. At that time, very little was known about CF, but the tenacity and strength of those families laid the groundwork for monumental progress in research, care, and treatment of this rare disease. Much has changed since 1950. Um, and through research, we've learned so much more about the genetics of CF. On the left is a picture of Danny at the age of 19, and he's looking back at a picture of himself as a young boy on the cover of this 1989 issue of Science, in which the discovery of the CFTR gene was reported. Danny is now over 30 years old, and you might say that he is the new face of CF. With the marked improvement in survival, half of the CF population in the United States are now 18 years of age or older, and projections are that the number of that number will just continue to grow. Carla mentioned the mission of the CF Foundation. I'd like to repeat that, to cure CF and provide all people with the disease the opportunity to lead full, productive lives by funding research, in drug development, promoting individualized treatment, and ensuring access to high-quality specialized care. The rest of our presentation today will be to describe to you how the CF Foundation is fulfilling that mission. 
The story of the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation is truly a remarkable one. And you can view a video that shows the timeline of that story on our, on our website at cff.org or on this YouTube link. And I hope that after this presentation, you will want to learn more about the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. But within that story, there have been many chapters. And the CF Foundation has many departments that help support our mission. I work in the medical department and would like to talk about the scope of activities in that department in detail. The leadership of the CF Foundation has developed a unique research model and that is designed to bring vital treatments from the bench to individuals with CF. So let's start by discussing basic research and drug discovery. The Cystic Fibrosis Foundation's development program, also known as RDP, is a network of research centers that brings together top-notch scientists from different disciplines to apply their expertise to the challenges of treating CF. Established in 1982, the network has now evolved into 11 research hubs around the country. RDP centers also serve as supply centers that share standardized tools with researchers not just in the U.S but around the world. The leadership of the CF Foundation realized that they could not wait for pharmaceutical companies to develop the medication so desperately needed by individuals with CF. So in 2012, the CF Foundation Therapeutics Incorporate, also known as CFFT, was established. This is the foundation's non-profit non drug discovery and development affiliate, and it operates its own research laboratory in Lexington, Massachusetts. The laboratory's team of scientists and technicians work closely with other researchers to identify and explore innovative approaches to help speed discovery of potential therapies that could move forward into clinical research. So let's move on and talk about drug development. The Therapeutics Development Network is a group of 89 clinical research sites throughout the United States. They are housed at care centers where clinical care is also delivered since that is where there is the best access to potential study subjects as well as a commitment to this disease. We have a coordinating center located in Seattle, Washington, and they provide network management by offering an infrastructure for communication, collaboration, and training of network centers. They provide project management support to key activities including protocol review and consultation with our industry sponsors. So just to give you a sense of how active the clinical trials community has been at the research sites, I'd like to show you this pipeline. This is the drug discovery pipeline and all of the clinical trials that were in that pipeline in the year 2000. This is the pipeline as of just last week and it just continues to expand. I want to just wait a moment so you can take a look at that. The total number of clinical trials has increased significantly since the year 2012. Presently, the number of active sites, sorry, presently the number of active studies is about 54. Now remember, there are only just about 30,000 people in the United States with cystic fibrosis. I hope that you can recognize the commitment of the CF Foundation and as well as the CF community. So let's turn our attention to clinical care. And as Carla mentioned, I have to have full disclosure that that's where my passions lie since I worked at the front line of care for so many years, over 25 years prior to coming to the CF Foundation. Now, in an effort to standardize CF care, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation established a care center network. Presently, we have 124 accredited care centers, 110 adult programs, and 52 smaller affiliate programs. These care centers and this care center network was launched in 1961 with just two care centers, one in Albany, New York, and the other in Atlanta, Georgia. And we saw a rapid growth 
in the 60s and 70s. And as a response to the aging CF population, thankfully, we had an acceptable adult care model in the 90s, in the late 90s, and we mandated that there were adult programs in the year 2000. So let's talk just for a moment about the accreditation structure. The CF Foundation has certain staffing and care standards for each program. And there is a peer oversight to make sure that care programs meet those standards. The CF Foundation is a unique accrediting body since we do not ask for funds in order to become an accredited center. In fact, we help support the stability and staffing of the care centers through annual grant funding. Another way in which the CF community provides standards of care are through clinical care guidelines. These guidelines and the need for the guidelines are identified from the clinical community and then the guidelines are developed by the community with CF Foundation support. Each guideline committee will be multidisciplinary just like the care centers have a multidisciplinary model. That committee will include at least one parent to give that important voice and also an adult with CF to make sure that that voice is also represented. Depending on the guideline, there may be also international representation. This is a picture of the group of international, the international group um, that worked on what we refer to as our mental health guidelines. One of the crown jewels of the CF Foundation is our patient data registry. Data is collected by all accredited care centers and it is actually one of the requirements for accreditation. The registry was started in the 1960s and has had many improvements since that time. Presently, we have a web-based portal that can be used to collect data in real time and care centers um, will then be fed back that data so they can review the information for outcomes as well as process measures and also to be able to see their um, ability for guidelines implementation. Individual patient data can also be available to care centers in real time, and this helps the teams with their pre-visit planning and care management. Network-wide data helps those care centers compare each other, compare themselves to one another, and then they can also take a look at how their treatment practices measure up to other care centers. They will also be able to use that information for their own quality improvement initiatives. I hope that you can see that the data available is on a national, a center, as well as an individual level. National and care centered specific data is then published by the CF Foundation and posted on our website in order to be transparent with those individuals who are most directly affected. Of course, individual data is not shared in this manner. This slide shows the many ways in which the data in the registry is used. The disease surveillance, clinical trials, post-marketing surveillance, quality improvement, and comparative effectiveness research. I'd like to turn the remainder of the program over to my colleague, Ozzie Cater. Ozzie, are you able to take over? Hi, Paula. I'm waiting for the screen to be relinquished. Paula, in your just in case you some, sometimes um, it's a little tricky finding it. I think you did. Um, you can find the transfer in the I believe on the top. There you go. <laughs> Are there. you able to grab? Were you able to grab that, Ozzy? 
I sure did. Thank you so Great. much. Sure. And before, actually, while you did this transition, and thank you for um, uh, making sure we, we can all see everything, one of the things I will mention so I don't forget at the end, um, Paula mentioned um, and showed you a hyperlink to a video. Please know that along with the follow-up email, I will also provide you with a link to that video. I wanted to make sure to mention that before I forgot. Um, with that, Ozzy, I'll let you go ahead and continue the rest of the presentation. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Carla. As the foundation forges ahead toward finding a cure for cystic fibrosis, we are also committed to helping people with CF and their families get the tools and support they need to lead healthy and productive lives today. We recognize that the incredible strides we're making in research and drug development that you just heard about would ultimately mean nothing if people with CF can't have access to the care and therapies they need. Living with cystic fibrosis comes with many medical, social, and financial challenges. Through community initiatives, advocacy efforts, and its branded patient access services, the CF Foundation is dedicated to ensure no one with CF goes through this journey alone. For years, the CF Foundation has been offering patient access services to the CF community. These services were recently rebranded as CF Foundation Compass, a name that aptly symbolizes the work of a dedicated and knowledgeable team of CF specialized patient advocates ready to help navigate complicated insurance, financial, legal, and other issues related to everyday life with CF. Compass is available to anyone with CF, their families, and their care team, regardless of income or insurance status. Compass patient advocates can help people with CF understand their current insurance coverage. They can help people get new insurance during life transitions. They can help connect people to resources that pay for medications, therapies, and other costs associated with CF. They can also help get legal information on topics like disability and government uh, benefits, as well as employment and school-related concerns. And they also help find resources for so many other everyday life concerns such as housing, living expenses, food insecurity, and transportation. Last year alone, Compass answered over 11,600 calls and handled over 5,000 requests for assistance related to insurance, financial, legal, and other concerns. If you or a loved one have cystic fibrosis and you would like to learn more information about how Compass can help you, please call us at 844-266-7277. We are open Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'll leave that up for everyone to take a moment to write down the phone number. Another way the CF Foundation serves the CF community is through policy and advocacy efforts. Federal and state governments play a vital role in CF research, drug development, and the ability of people with CF to access the care and therapies they need. We are empowering members of the CF community to talk with their representatives about issues important to people with cystic fibrosis. Our goal is to help educate policymakers about the needs of people with CF so that they make smart decisions about CF-related research, treatment, and access to care. Currently, the foundation is working with lawmakers at every level of government to advocate for health care that is adequate, affordable, and accessible. We also fight for robust funding for FDA and NIH to help the development of new treatments for cystic fibrosis. Through grassroots advocacy and meetings with members of Congress, 
we ensure the voice of the, of the CF community is always heard. Speaking of the voice of the CF community, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation recognizes the value of tapping into the expertise that only people with CF and their families have. As such, we have organized community partnership, partnership initiatives through which members of the CF community can share their insights to help improve and develop programs and services that support them in their daily lives. These initiatives include Community Voice, BreatheCon, and CF MiniCons, which are all virtual platforms for contributing to and sharing insights together as a community, along with peer mentoring opportunities for adults with cystic fibrosis. For more information on these efforts, please visit the community website page through the link shown on this slide. With that, Paula and I would like to thank you all for tuning in to our webinar on the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation and our efforts in adding tomorrows for people with CF and helping them live better today. And now I'm going to hopefully navigate correctly back to Carla <laughs> for well, thank questions you so and much. answers. <laughs> thank you so much, Paula and Ozzy, for that very informative presentation. Not only um, I think what always jumps out to me because I represent needy meds and this is where our missions align, that you really never lose focus as you had so aptly said, Ozzy, that this is, it's wonderful, the advancements, but it wouldn't make a difference unless you can get this education and resources to the people who really need it. And I think you guys do a superb job of doing that. So thank you so much for taking the time um, to explain to us um, the breadth of information that is available. In the meantime, everybody can see, um, I grabbed the screen from Ozzy, and that's just a snapshot of Needy Med's homepage. Um, I will remind everybody, I already see some questions coming in, but if you do have any questions, again, type them into the questions section of your GoToWebinar control panel. And while we're taking questions, I'm going to go ahead and take a moment just to point out just a few resources that Needy Meds offers for people living not only with cystic fibrosis, but other conditions. On the Needy Meds website, and I will provide you um, with the follow-up email, not only for the contact information for cystic fibrosis via their website and toll-free number, I will certainly provide you with the contact information for Needy Meds as well. And on the Needy Meds website, you'll find all of our patient healthcare cost savings programs under the patient savings tab. And under that tab, there are a number of categories that will help you to save on your healthcare expenses. If you're looking for help, as some people come to Needy Meds either through our website or a toll-free helpline searching for cost saving options for a particular medication or for another expense. But you can also search on our database for help by diagnosis. And you can search for that through some of these categories, our diagnosis information pages, our diagnosis-based assistance programs, coupons, rebates, camps, and scholarships. And again, you can find all of that information under the patient savings tab, or you can simply and easily call our expert counselors at 1-800 503-6897, and don't worry about jotting down that phone number. As I said, it will be in the follow-up email. And with that, I'm going to go ahead. I have a couple of questions coming in from our audience, and the first one, I'm going to direct it to you, Paula. I have somebody writing in that says that they have CF and are interested in joining the CF patient registry. Can you explain how this individual would go about that? Thanks, Carla. Um, yes, in order to be part of the, the uh, CF patient data registry, an individual needs to attend an accredited care center or receive their care at an accredited care center. That individual will then be asked um, to read and sign an informed consent in order for their data to be submitted 
by the care center staff into the patient registry. So I hope that that answers that question. To me, it answers it thoroughly. I'm not seeing any follow-up coming into that. But again, um, for those of you, um, as I said, if we don't get a chance to answer your question, you can always reach out to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation directly via their website or at 1-800-344-4823. And Ozzy, I'm actually going to direct the next question, I believe, to you. It's about Compass. Somebody is writing in saying that they do not currently have insurance. Can they still receive assistance from Compass? Thanks, Carla. That's a great question, and the answer is yes. Uh, we help people with CF and their families uh, find a adequate um, coverage uh, and a new plan or insurance uh, every day on a daily basis. So I encourage um, the, uh, the person who submitted the question to please contact us, and we can talk through it together. Uh, and look for a plan that helps meet their specific needs. Thank you so much for that thorough answer. As everybody can see, I have a wrap-up slide that has our contact information, and I'll forward that along as well. But one of the things I would like to do, usually before we wrap up, is usually on um, I will put on one of our slides for the PowerPoint presentation, some of our upcoming webinars, and I realized I neglected to do that. So I wanted to give everybody that's um, joining us today just a quick snapshot of where you can find other Needy Meds webinars. You can visit the Advocates tab, clicking on Needy Meds webinars, and as you can see, we always have at least once a month monthly webinars, so you can learn more about Needy Meds. We also have something called Briefs, which are short webinars that will provide detailed information about a specific needy meds resource. And then towards the bottom, you can find all of our special topic webinars, which are often um, dedicated towards diagnoses, such as today, or other healthcare saving resources, such as the one coming up at the end of the month for the PAN Foundation. You can also check out the Needy Meds calendar of events at the bottom right hand of the page to sign up for any of our other upcoming free webinars. So with that, once again, thank you, Ozzy and Paula, for taking time out of your day to share your expertise with the Needy Meds audience. I'm going to go ahead and leave up the last slide and our contact information. And you can expect everybody to hear from me within a few minutes after the webinar with that follow-up email. And please be sure to check out our calendar to see when Ozzy and Paula or another representative from the CF Foundation is going to come back for another presentation. Thanks, everybody, and thanks, Ozzy and Paula, for your um, expertise. Have a great rest of the day. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.